Hi everyone, we are going to start a lecture series on network theory. The, the network theory is common for this particular branches ECE, Triple E and EIE. The syllabus content for all these three branches is same. So what all content we are going to discuss in this is, the, if you see the syllabus of this subject network theory, the first thing that we are going to discuss in this is charge, current, voltage, energy and power. That would be our first topic and after that we are going to discuss about the VI characteristics of R, L and C elements. So what are the VI characteristics of relationship means it's basically determined by Ohm's law. For example, if we talk about resistor V equal to IR that gives you the Ohm's law for resistance. Similarly, we will be seeing the different forms of Ohm's law for resistor, inductor and capacitor. Next topic that we are going to study is classification of elements. When we talk about any element for example, it can be a resistor, it can be a inductor, capacitor or diode or transistor. We can have various classifications for those elements. So when we talk about classification of elements, we can classify the element as a lumped element or a distributed element. If we take any one particular element, we can classify it as a active element or a passive element. In a similar manner, the same element can be classified as a bilateral element or a unilateral element. Next to the same element can also be classified as a linear or non-linear element. And the last classification would be time varying and time invarying elements. After classification of elements, we are going to study about elements in series. When we connect two elements in series, what is going to happen is voltage is going to be divided between those two elements. What is we call is voltage division principle. When we connect two elements, two or more elements in series, voltage get divided. So we are going to study that. After that, we are going to study about two elements or more elements connected in parallel. When we connect the elements in parallel, the current is going to be divided among those elements. That's we are that's we are going to study in this particular topic. After this has been done, we are going for a Y delta transformation. After that, we are going for a star delta transformation or a Y delta transformation of the networks. Next, after this, we are going to study about the classification of sources. Basically, we can classify the sources as dependent sources and independent sources. Next is the classification of dependent sources. We can classify the dependent sources into four types. The first one would be current control, current source. The next one would be voltage control, current source. These are the two current sources. One is controlled by current variable and the other one is being controlled by the voltage variable. Next we are going to see the two dependent voltage sources types. So in this one, the first one would be current control, voltage source and the second one would be voltage control, voltage source. In all we have, we have four different types of dependent sources. We are going to see the properties of each each of this current source dependent sources in greater detail. Next we are going to discuss is classification of independent sources. If we broadly classify the independent sources, it's going to be DC sources and AC sources. Now I am going to classify the DC sources. This DC sources can be classified into two types. The first one would be ideal DC sources and the second one would be practical DC sources. Now each of this ideal or practical source can be a voltage source or a current source, right? Now if we see, now let us take for example example a practical voltage DC source. So the circuit symbol for the practical DC voltage source is something like this. It is going to be represented as Vs in series with Rs where Rs represents the internal resistance of the voltage source and this Vs is going to be treated as an ideal voltage source. Ideal voltage source in series with some finite Rs, non-zero finite Rs is going to represent your practical voltage source. We are going to study in a greater detail what are the terminal characteristics of this. Right? In a similar manner, we are going to study the practical current source IS in, C in parallel with RS. The internal resistance of a practical current source is connected in parallel with the ideal current source. So, ideally speaking, the internal resistance of the 
uh, ideal voltage source RS must be zero and the internal resistance of the ideal current source RS must be infinite and open circuit represents infinite resistance that all these things in a greater detail we are going to study when we are going to uh, talk about classification of independent sources AC sources and the same same classification is valid for the AC sources as well as practical voltage source now how different representation is used is only in AC we don't have a positive or negative right we don't have but for reference purpose we take positive and negative and generally what notation is used in AC ideal voltage sources a sinusoidal signal is drawn along with this a sinusoidal signal is drawn along with this so this becomes the circuit symbol for your practical AC current source and this becomes the practical voltage source AC voltage source okay so this uh, this is what is ideal current AC source ideal AC voltage source next we are going to study is voltage sources in series and parallel after that we are going to talk about current sources in series and parallel what happens when we connect two or more voltage sources in series or parallel what will be its equivalent what behavior how it can behave and what are its features we are going to see in each of these topics next we are going to talk about k loss Kirchhoff loss we are basically having two loss one is Kirchhoff current law and the other one is Kirchhoff voltage law and each of this loss what it signifies and what it tries to tell what is its significance we are going to see the in detail what are its features in very greater detail for each of these two loss after that we are going to talk about nodal analysis nodal analysis is nothing but the combination of your KCL plus Ohm's law is what is used for your nodal analysis and in this nodal analysis there are some steps need to be followed that we will see what are the steps that need to be followed to perform nodal analysis and in this nodal analysis there could be a one special case called as super node analysis one 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 node is there one particular node is called as your super node in that particular special case is there we are going to study even that after this, we are going to talk about mesh analysis in mesh analysis what is mesh analysis means we are going to use kvl along with your ohms law in the mesh analysis what first what we are going to do in the mesh analysis is first we will be uh, writing the steps that are need to be done in order to do the mesh analysis once after doing the steps regarding the mesh analysis we are going to study a one special case of mesh analysis that is what is your super mesh analysis next we are going to study network theorems why we go for network theorems is we in order to analyze large and complex networks these theorems are useful tools now what are the theorems that we are going to study is this is the this is what is the list of the theorems that we are going to study the first theorem that we are going to study is the telegance theorem next we are going to study is the source transformation theorem next superposition theorem after that Thevenius theorem Norton's theorem maximum power transfer theorem reciprocity theorem substitution theorem and Milman's theorem in each of these theorems we are going to first study the statement what it states after statement what are its features and what are its applications where these theorems are applicable and at, and at what places these theorems are not applicable so that is what we are going to read in very great detail about each of this theorem next we will discuss transients in transients it can be a DC transients or AC transients in DC transients we, will, we are going to consider source free circuits and circuits with sources and each of this can be solved using time domain approach or Laplace transform approach in AC transients there exists a condition for transient free right transient free condition we will study first after that we are going for the phasor representation or phasor approach of solving the AC transients problems and next we are going for a Laplace transform approach to solve the problems associated with AC transients after that we are going to talk about resonance resonance can occur in series RLC circuit or parallel RLC circuit next we are going to study coupled circuits
simple circuits we are going to talk about magnetic coupling series aiding and opposing parallel aiding and opposing that is what we are going to study in greater detail to find the equal inductance for series aiding parallel aiding various aiding and opposing okay next we are going for the power calculations what is real power what is reactive power and what is apparent power in the ac circuits next we are going to talk about the network synthesis transfer function will be given to us and we are going to find an equivalent circuit for which we get that particular transfer function next we are going to talk about graph theory in this we are going to convert our given network into a graph right for that graph we have various uh, techniques to find the response in various elements we are going to talk in greater detail in the graph theory and i forgot to mention about sinusoidal steady state analysis for ac transients so that is also is that is what also we are going to discuss the textbooks that need to be followed for this course are here uh, network analysis by van welkenberg the second textbook would be engineering circuit analysis by heath kemerly and steve and the third textbook would be fundamentals of electric circuit by alexander and sadiku so these three textbooks you can refer in order to uh, solve numericals